A young man excluded by everyone at his school is given superhuman powers when he is bitten by a genetically modified dragonfly. Today we're going to recap the 2008 superhero movie. Rick is bullied by all the students at his school and has only one friend, Trey. Every day, they both meet on the same school bus, but on that day the class from Empire City High School was heading for a visit to an animal research laboratory. On the way there, Rick realizes that he doesn't fit into any kind of group with the other students, he's just part of the school newspaper and has a secret crush on Jill Johnson, a girl who hardly notices him and is still dating the bully, Lance Landers. In the laboratory, the class is greeted by Dr. Strom, the head researcher, who explains to everyone that the animals that live there are genetically modified and have unique properties. Rick wastes no time and quickly approaches Jill who is watching a bird. He tries to talk to her briefly and says that he is going to photograph the animal for the school newspaper, at which point Dr. Strom explains that students should not feed any animals, let alone photograph them, as the vast majority are sensitive to light. Rick then takes a photo of the bird, causing the animal to combust instantly. The young man tries to put out the flames that have already consumed the creature's entire body and, in a frustrating attempt to contain the fire, ends up kicking the bird's body towards Lance. The bully advances towards the nerd to finish him off, Jill tries to stop him, but can't. Lance is only restrained by the arrival of his uncle, Lou Landers, the lab's chief executive. Lou recognizes Rick by his surname and claims to have known his parents, but the young man replies that they perished a long time ago and he's currently living with his aunt and uncle. In the middle of the conversation, Rick realizes that Lance's uncle has a health problem, but the man replies that he's fine. The bully takes advantage of his uncle leaving the scene and pushes Rick towards an area full of animal excrement. The young man quickly looks for something to clean himself with, finds a bottle with something that looks like water and decides to use the substance to remove the dirt on his shirt. However, Dr. Strom explains to his students that the laboratory team is currently carrying out new experiments with the animals and, to do this, they use an extremely powerful pheromone that affects the nervous system of each one of them, and through this, an immense sensation is generated for them to reproduce. Just then, Rick realizes that the liquid he was using to clean himself was not water, but the pheromone used for reproduction. In a few seconds, several animals of different species advance towards the young man. Even a genetically modified dragonfly that was hiding there ends up biting Rick's neck. In the evening, the young man's aunt and uncle receive a call from the school informing them that Rick has run away from the lab excursion. The young man arrives home in a critical state of health, but his aunt and uncle deduce that he is just going through puberty. When he gets to his room, Albert, Rick's uncle, tries to talk to his nephew, but the young man can't stand the symptoms and collapses. That same evening, in the research laboratory, executive Lou Landers tries to demonstrate his new project to other company employees. He tells everyone that he only has an hour to live, so he has decided to create a machine to live even longer. With the help of Dr. Strom, Lou goes through a painful process on his own invention to show everyone what he's really capable of. Eventually, the employees realize that the machine hasn't worked and Lou is going to perish anyway. However, Lou grabs the arm of one of the employees and, just by touching him, manages to drain all of the man's vital energy. He becomes more powerful and quickly begins to suck the life out of everyone in the place. The next day, Rick wakes up without any symptoms on his body, even the dragonfly bite mark has disappeared. The young man goes to his computer and tries to find out on the internet if he has contracted a serious illness after the dragonfly bite. The young man answers a form and ends up meeting an unknown user on a social network. The person claims to have the answer to the young man's problem and says that they will be able to meet very soon. That morning, the students of Empire City High School receive an illustrious visit from the theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking. Everyone is excited to observe the various experiments at the science fair. Rick realizes that Jill is also there and tries to calm down so he can go and talk to the girl. The young man goes to a drinking fountain, but his hands get stuck in the object and he has to use a lot of force to get them out, throwing the thing at Lance. The bully proceeds to beat up the nerd and people quickly start watching the two of them fight. Rick manages to dodge all of his opponent's attacks with incredibly quick reflexes. However, Rick ends up losing his focus and takes a supreme beating from the bully. The young man causes a stir at the science fair and Stephen Hawking ends up being thrown into a glass with several hunter bees. The animals escape and chaos takes over the school. Later, Rick returns home disappointed, he walks down the street and at the sight of an empty alley, he tries once again to use his special abilities, he puts his hands on a wall and begins to climb with great ease. While discovering some of his new skills, the old lady tries to cross the street, but a truck comes hurtling towards her. The driver fails to apply the brakes and realizes that he is going to hit the old woman. Rick sees that a tragedy is about to happen, so the young man acts quickly and manages to save her. 
At the same time, Rick stops the truck using only his own body. People admire the young man for his heroic act and say he's a new superhero, but the young man realizes that by pushing the old woman off the road, he's thrown her into a crusher. When he gets home, Rick tells his uncle and his friend Trey that he may have superpowers caused by the bite he received from a dragonfly. Albert then shoots a nail at his nephew. The young man unbelievably manages to hold the projectile in his hands and says that it's easy for him to do that. The young man's uncle then shoots a nail at Trey and the young man goes limp, so Albert concludes that Rick really does have special abilities. The young man also says that he could see very clearly the punches that Lance threw in his direction, so his uncle punches Trey and confirms that this is also the young man's unique ability. That same night, Rick goes to the back of his house and begins to think about everything that is happening, he holds the ring his father gave him in his last moments of life and remembers the sad day he perished. On that fateful day, his family left a concert and as they passed an alley, they noticed several people in critical situations. Rick told his father that he wanted to become someone to change their lives. On their way home, a thief approaches the family and orders them to give him everything. The young man's father tries to confront him and at first manages to stop him from firing his gun, but Rick tries to join in the fight. The little young boy, however, ends up getting in the way and makes the thief shoot at his father and mother several times and the man just flees the scene. Rick observes the sad scene, his father then hands the family ring to the young man and explains that the entire fortune will stay with him. As a last request, he asks the young man to sell all the shares the family owns in Google, because according to him, this company has no future. As a result, Rick has lost his family's entire fortune. In the present, the young man meets Jill, who is also his neighbor. They talk and say that they are going through serious problems, Jill says that she doesn't want to go to college and want to pursue a career as a dancer. In a few seconds, Lance arrives in a car and asks his girlfriend out on a date. The girl looks at Rick and says that one day they could go for a drive too. The next morning, the young man starts searching for car prices with the intention of buying one, but realizes that with his savings he won't be able to buy anything, at which point he receives a video from the same unknown user who claimed that he would help him with his problem but Rick doesn't understand anything because the video was all corrupted. That morning, the young man goes out with his uncles to try to get a loan at the bank, but because of his history of unemployment, he is not approved. Despite the young man's insistence, the manager says it's not his problem and asks him to leave. Just then, a robber enters the place and takes all the money. When he gets to the exit, the man can't open the door, so Rick helps him and when the young man is confronted by the manager, he says it wasn't his problem. A few seconds later, several shots are fired and a crowd forms in the street. Rick rushes to the scene and realizes that it was a performance with a dancing monkey, but then he realizes that his uncle has been shot and is completely wounded. His last words to Rick were for the young man to use his powers properly, because with great powers come great responsibilities. In the city's laboratory, Lou Landers suffers the consequences of his experiment, he quickly loses his vitality and enters a deplorable state, one of his employees enters his room to try to help, but Lou drains all her energy and becomes stronger again. At the hospital, Rick receives a visit from Jill and ends up being told by a doctor that his uncle probably won't survive because of his serious injuries. The young man returns home extremely sad, but on the way, he meets a mysterious man. His name is Charles Xavier, he is the mysterious person who contacted the young man a few days ago, he tells Rick that he has the power to read minds and will help him become a hero. Xavier takes the young man to his school for mutants, a place where several students have special powers. Some have more common abilities, such as elasticity, while others have insane powers, such as a young man who, with just one sneeze, can exterminate anyone in front of him. During the tour of the school, the young man meets some very famous personalities, such as Wolverine, Storm and the Invisible Woman. The young man also meets Mrs. Xavier, who tells him that the first step to becoming a superhero is to make his own costume. Rick returns home and begins his creation, spending days in his room until the suit is finished. Trey goes to visit him and thinks it's amazing, but the young man forgot to put vents in his costume and could see practically nothing. After making the necessary adjustments, Rick goes to the top of a building to observe the city, but ends up meeting the Human Torch, they talk about their powers, and soon after, the member of the Fantastic Quartet decides to demonstrate his incredible ability. When he says, flame on, his whole body is engulfed in fire, but he ends up reporting that it's too hot and quickly panics. Rick tries to help and even grabs a fire extinguisher, but his methods definitely don't work. After that, Rick decides to exploit his dragonfly powers, he jumps off the building, but realizes that he can't fly. As the days went by, Empire City began to recognize the acts of bravery of the city's new superhero. Dragonfly saves people from danger, defeats bandits and keeps the city peaceful. In the research lab, 
Dr. Strom tells Lou Landers that because of his new power, he needs to drain one life a day to stay alive, otherwise he will perish soon. On hearing this, the executive thinks of a plan and says he'll put it into practice soon. In the city, Rick realizes that his version of the hero is becoming extremely popular, he sees in a newspaper publication that they are paying for photos of the dragonfly, so the young man goes to the place to get some money. When he arrives in the newsroom, he is greeted by an extremely authoritarian and explosive man. However, this was just a patient from the mental hospital. The real boss of the newspaper enters the room and explains everything to the young man, as they share the same building with a mental hospital. Rick shows him some photos of Dragonfly, but the man explains that he wants photos of the superhero in action. Then, one of the members of the newspaper informs the boss that the police are surrounding Empire University. Rick, upon hearing this, wastes no time and heads for the place. At the university, the police are surprised by the appearance of a new villain, calling himself Hourglass, whose aim is to drain the life out of as many people as possible. Dragonfly arrives at the university and starts the confrontation by throwing a powerful punch at the villain. They then start a physical fight, but both end up being stunned during the clash. Hourglass uses his titanium blades against Dragonfly, the hero tries to dodge the shots, but ends up being hit by all of them. The villain says he won't let his opponent spoil his plans, so he destroys a wall and flees the scene. Rick returns home and treats his wounds with the help of his friend Trey. While watching Jill from his bedroom window, the young man receives some advice from his aunt, who tells him that Dragonfly should never reveal his real identity, because then the villains would attack the most important people in the hero's life. In the evening, Rick goes to see his friend perform, but ends up arriving late. Shortly afterwards, Jill asks him if he's hiding something, but Rick holds back and says he has nothing to say. Jill says goodbye to her friend and heads home. On the way, she is approached by several criminals and even tries to run away, but ends up cornered in an alley, when there is nowhere left to run, Jill is saved by Dragonfly. The hero finishes off the bandits in a few seconds with his incredible strength, the young woman thanks the hero with a kiss, and then he returns to help the citizens of Empire City. A few days later, Jill helps Rick's aunt prepare a special dinner, she and her boyfriend Lance are going to keep the old lady company. A few minutes later, Lance finds Jill and tells her that his uncle is also coming for dinner. Rick's aunt doesn't mind the man's presence, but notices that her nephew hasn't arrived yet. She deduces that he might be in his room and decides to call him. However, Landers volunteers to go there and look for the young man. At that moment, Rick enters his bedroom window, he realizes that someone is approaching and tries to hide. Landers enters the room and suspects that the young man is hiding there, he looks everywhere, but Rick always finds a way to hide, finally, the man gives up and goes back to the kitchen. Rick arrives at exactly the same moment through the front door, apologizes for being late and joins the others at the table. Landers quickly realizes that the young man has wounds on his arm, but Rick claims to have been injured at work. His aunt then tells him that he works as the photographer for the hero Dragonfly. Landers begins to connect all the events and quickly comes to a conclusion, he then says that he won't be able to continue at dinner as he needs to deal with an emergency. That same night, Rick tells Jill that he knows Dragonfly, and the girl says she's in love with the hero and would like to get to know him better. Soon after, the young man begins a declaration of love for Jill. However, the romantic moment ends when the young man's aunt, who was asleep, ends up releasing a brutal fart, the power of which is so great that the house begins to deteriorate. At that moment, Hourglass appears on the scene and discovers Dragonfly's real identity. The young man tries to restrain the villain, but fails miserably. The man says that he still doesn't want to eliminate his rival, but he's going to take away what he loves most. Hourglass approaches the young man's aunt and with just one touch, drains all her vitality. Rick took his aunt to the hospital, but was told that she was no longer alive, but to his surprise his uncle had recovered and come out of his coma. Albert received the news that his wife had perished and within a few days everyone was gathered for the funeral. Rick's uncle couldn't bear to go through it and, seeing his beloved in the coffin, decided to throw himself into it. However, the body was that of another woman who had also perished, so he retreated and finally found the coffin with his wife. The man can't contain his emotion and advances towards the coffin again, this time his wife's body falls from the structure and catches fire because of a bonfire. At the end of all the chaos, Jill tries to talk to Rick, but the young man says he doesn't love her and that they should move on with their lives, because he doesn't want her to have the same fate as his aunt. Days go by and Rick is completely shaken by losing his aunt and distancing himself from the girl he's always been in love with. He receives support from Albert and Trey, and the young man is encouraged to become the hero of Empire City again, and to do so he must defeat Hourglass. Rick says that the villain is after a large number of people to drain everyone's vitality and has no idea where his next victims might be. 
At that moment, an article in the newspaper announces a major award ceremony to recognize the heroic acts of various personalities, and a large number of people will gather to attend the event. Albert takes his nephew and Trey to the venue, but as they enter the ceremony, they realize that several personalities are present and one of them is Hourglass. As the award ceremony begins, Landers is the first to receive his award. He doesn't care and all he cares about is putting his evil plan into practice. While he's backstage, Rick goes to confront him and seek answers. The young man asks if the man has any idea who Hourglass might be. Landers calmly replies that he could be the next prize winner, he points to the stage and says that the Dalai Lama could be the villain, then the stage curtains open and everyone watches the hero Dragonfly throw several punches at the religious leader. The scene creates complete chaos and the ceremony becomes a combat arena between countless celebrities. Jill realizes that Landers is the hourglass because he is using the device capable of draining people's lives. The villain appears in the midst of the chaos and begins his plan. Dragonfly pursues the villain and by going through one of the walls destroyed by the man, Rick arrives at a costume convention. The real hourglass then flees in his flying machine, the roof collapses and he ends up falling on top of the hero. At that moment, Hourglass takes advantage of the situation and fires a titanium blade in his rival's direction. Jill then steps in and is seriously injured, allowing Hourglass to escape. While Rick tries to comfort Jill, Stephen Hawking encourages the hero to persist in his goal, because even though he doesn't know how to fly to reach his opponent, he has the willpower to keep fighting. Rick encourages himself and goes after Hourglass. The villain begins to drain the lives of several people in order to achieve immortality. Rick disrupts the evil plan by contacting the machine and manages to get Jill back to normal. After saving her, the hero enters the final fight against his greatest enemy, Hourglass, who throws a bomb at the young man, but the young man can't get rid of the object, as his body sticks to it when something comes into contact with it. The young man then advances towards the villain and, as he approaches him, detonates the bomb so that they both suffer the destruction. Hourglass is finally defeated, but due to the huge explosion, Jill ends up falling from the building. Rick doesn't think twice and jumps in to save her, they meet in the air and the girl notices that the hero is wearing Rick's ring and so discovers his true identity. The young man says he would never leave her, she kisses him and finally the hero gets access to his dragonfly wings. Rick flies through the city sky with his beloved and says that he will always be a hero who will defend humanity from evil, but just then, a helicopter hits them both. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.